So hello and uh, I welcome you to today's uh, special webinar here exclusively for JFD brokers. Um, my name is Jens Slat and uh, the webinar here, it's not the first time, so it's um, um, it's been a while right now. So, so we had uh, the pleasure to, to have several uh, market opening of the US markets webinars so far. And also today we want to have a look. So um, things are not that spectacular right now, but it could turn out to become a little spectacular, especially if you had um, had a look at the performance of the U.S. equities yesterday. Um, probably some of you might have seen what happened in the uh, Russell 2000 here. Um, so this this uh, index is covering the small and mid caps, and uh, um, and well, I, I think it's it's too much to say uh, the market went berserk, but it nevertheless pushed aggressively higher. And uh, I want to show to you some stats here, some very interesting developments in the small and mid cap sector. Um, first of all, here, the, the risk disclaimer, um, I'm very important. So if there are any trades or setups we formulate, um, then please make sure that you understand all risks involved here. And uh, here, um, uh, please understand also that this is uh, not meant to be some kind of investment advice or something. But uh, that JFD brokers in general, but also uh, my person here, that we only offer exclusively consultancy-free services, and the content of this webinar does not constitute investment advice, as already mentioned, or investment recommendations, or something like that. Um, and first of all, let's let's give you here uh, the setup. It's it's uh, nothing new, nothing spectacular. Um, it's the same setup we uh, discussed here already for plenty of times. Um, and um, so, in fact, uh, um, what, what I can already see here, please uh, tell us uh, the in and out points, entry points, and, and then exit points, and so on. Yeah, no, no question about that. So you have the setup already here. So you could easily just uh, screenshot this um, this uh, um, uh, screen here. Just take a screenshot and then um, work with that. That's this. That's the setup. Um, in fact, we have to wait until the uh, setup is defined here. So it depends on uh, what the market delivers us. So in fact, we have to wait not just for the market opening at 1.30 p.m. GMT, but also another 45 minutes until we have um, a clear high and low during the time frame between 1.30 and 2.15 p.m. GMT. So these 45 minutes. And then we define our entry based on our identified advantage. That's what we do already in, in one. I'll, I'll give you a chart um, um, and, and show it to you how we do this. Um, but what I can also tell you, we're working with an exponential moving average, um, 10 here on a 50 minute time frame. And in fact, it's if we're trading above that, we are long. If we're trading below that, we are short. That's it. Um, and uh, then we wait for the breakout to happen here out of this range, and that's the setup. So um, I can't clearly tell you right now what will be the exact points since we have to wait since this setup um, uh, will be uh, delivered from the market itself. And um, in fact, we won't be capable of formulating the setup here since this webinar only takes place till 2 p.m. GMT. So it's one hour from now. But probably this is something um, which is not that bad at all. Um, some might say, hey, then we don't get to see a trade. I think and I firmly believe uh, that um, thinking yourself and, and really understanding what we're talking here is crucial to have a chance of being long-term successful in the markets, trading the markets. And um, in fact, this setup itself here, it's an intraday trading setup. Some of you out there probably might say, hey, you know what? I'm not a day trader, but I'm I'm interested in trading and probably also I'm interested in some day trading approaches, yes. But all in all, based on my personal uh, um, uh, living situation, I can sit in front of a screen every day and trade here, um, uh, the, the open range, in, for example, in the S&P, even though I think this webinar also, and also having a clear predefined setup here, gives um, some some real value to all those who are probably, let's call them swing traders or more mid to long term traders, probably some investors. I'm not I'm not that sure um, whether whether an investor here um, will listen to 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 a live trading session covering the U.S. market open, but um, all in all, what. What is uh, key to success in trading, long-term success in trading and profitability in trading is that you have 
to have an advantage. You have to have an advantageous trading strategy. And uh, you have to trade this over and over and over and over again. And that way, you, um, you get something we call a trading routine here in your trading. And um, that's, in fact, the, the only way to become long-term profitable in your trading, since probably some of you might have sit in front of um, their screens and uh, have been incredibly excited about what was happening in the market. Probably some of you, let's, let's just have a look here in the market. Um, let's have a look here in the DAX, for example. So it's the German index. It's, uh, have, it has nothing to do with the S&P so far. There is a correlation. Probably we'll have a look at this a little later on. And I'll give you some uh, ideas of how I see the situation. So in fact, I have currently a position going. You won't see this position, by the way. I've prepared already the um, uh, MetaTrader here to, to show you um, a great tool you could use in your trading, the so-called mini terminal in the MetaTrader uh, 4 Plus from JFD Brokers. Um, but I, I won't do uh, these uh, um, uh, examples here with this tool Obviously, I won't do them in a live trading environment. Um, if you want, if you're interested, I can easily switch to the live account a little later on, and then I can show you the position, even though, um, I mean, I, I really hoped, I really hoped for more action to come today. But even if we switch to this position, and some of you might say, yeah, that would be great, seeing a live position going right now. And uh, But the thing is that right now, the market is trading above the break-even point. So um, I went long around uh, 69.1, 69.2 um, in the morning. And um, as you can see, the market dipped a little higher, dipped a little lower. I I'm long from this point onwards. Um, but nothing happened so far. And in fact, right now, uh, the PNL is, is a zero. And um, all in all, what I can tell you about my trading approach, it's not the same strategy, by the way, I'm trading here for the S&P. It's a, it's a, I trade also this open range setup for the DAX, but um, the trade, um, this uh, the strategy, this trade is based on, is a complete different strategy. Um, but it needs, first of all, it needs volatility. And second of all, it needs trends. So trending markets here. And uh, we have we haven't both. It's it's first. Oh, well, no, that's not right. We have a trending market, yes, but the trend itself it's a very it's a very volatile market environment. So if you look here on the hourly chart, for example, in the DAX, you can see that obviously it's very range bound. Even though you see a tendency here on the upside, and um, in fact. Um, let me give you just just an idea of um, how the mark, how the month started. So we are about to close the month, and let me give you just just some some insights here how uh, my my book developed, let's say, over uh, the last four weeks here over the month of September. That's also probably some uh, interesting for for some of my investors right now listening to me. So I'm managing clients' money also, and um, so probably some of them are are interested in that. I can tell you it's not an outstanding performance. In fact, it's a break even performance as well. Um, slightly with a slight minus here, in fact, but um, nothing big. So 0 0.1 or 0.2 percent. I haven't calculated uh, accurately so far. And what? How did the mark uh, the month start? It started here and it started horribly. Uh, it was just like, uh, yeah, it was a very choppy environment. We've seen, we found ourselves in here, and um, so in fact, I started the um, month out with a with a minus of something like one percent. I was behind 1% here. Um, so, I, and it wasn't because I was wrong on the wrong side of the, of the market, but since the system didn't perform well. And it had mainly to do with the fact that also here, um, even though you might say, hey, this, this is not September here. This is end of July, August. So what does this have to do with, with September? You can see that you should also uh, always have a, have a big picture here. Just take a step back and look at the market and then you will just see, okay, the market obviously had a downward structure, falling highs, falling lows from the region around the all-time highs, and then was uh, in a very choppy market environment here. And I know that the system doesn't perform that well um, in, a, in a choppy market environment. I, I just know this. And uh, all I can do is here manage the trades accordingly, um, reduce the position size since the market switches uh, to the favorable, to favorable, more favorable market conditions here. But you have to, to just trade through um, the, the the strategy, the system here. And um, in fact, I had to wait until this break occurred here. And uh, that was a Monday. So the market 
broke above this uh, significant resistance line here. And these were the market conditions I was looking for. I was hoping to, 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 to catch them. And in fact, that turned around the PL for the month. And um, I was ahead for some days, some weeks, one, one and a half week here. And then this happened. And again, I generated or I had several um, signals which were in that favorable. And I gave back most of the gains I, I accumulated here after turning around the negative result I had so far. I already said it, it's nothing big. It's minus 1%. Then you turn it around and you're ahead 1%, in fact. Um, and then yeah, you're giving it back again. And now the thing is the market somehow trends higher. So it, where it's not really a trend. It's like, like a drift higher. And the thing I'm right now hoping for, in fact, is, um, so I'm long here, is that the market market now breaks out here on the upside, breaking above the July highs and developing a trend again. So probably bringing me in the positive territory into the month, uh, uh, into the end of the month, and not just me, but also my investors and their 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 accounts I'm managing here. So uh, that's what I'm right now looking for, even though what you can also see is, um, and this is something crucial, I, I'd like to emphasize this, um, you always have to know what are my market conditions um, and what kind of guy I am, what do I look for and what do I try to, to capitalize on? And um, if you do not know this, it's like running a business, but not knowing what you're selling to your clients. So, um, I mean, there are pl probably plenty of guys out there. So in Germany, um, there's a usual um, tendency for many people saying, I want to be free. I want to be an entrepreneur. In fact, if you compare this, for example, to the United States, or also several other countries out there, um, Germans are really risk averse. So you can also see this if you look, for example, on, uh, on their savings and how much Germans save. Germans do not invest that much. So, well, the, the biggest investment you can probably get from a German is they are buying a house and then they go to work and they just go to work to, to finance their uh, real estate here. That's what they're doing. Um, but big entrepreneurs are not very likely to be met here in Germany, in fact. And um, so this is this is something uh, where, where you can now see, OK, um, when a German goes out and wants to be an entrepreneur or thinks he's an entrepreneur, it's uh, unusual. And it's not just unusual, I think, but also if you if you bring this over or if you build a bridge here to trading, um, it would be like, OK, I go out, I'm risk averse. I'm going out with my with my own business here, but I don't know what I want to do business with. I don't know what I want to sell. It's the same. It's exactly the same for trading. Um, I, I, by the way, think that there are many people out there who have a big chance to become better traders than Germans um, just because there is some, call it entrepreneurial spirit to, to many of, of, of the guys, for example, in the US, uh, because these guys are risk somehow risk takers. They're taking smart risks. But this is exactly what trading is about. But therefore, you really have to know your stuff. You really have to know what do I look for and what do I want to sell to my clients. And um, it's, it's not just selling your clients some stuff, but high quality stuff to make sure that they'll return, bring their friends, bring um, 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 their, 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 their clients, that they do business with you too. So it's a long-term relationship which is developing here. And um, that said, it's uh, exactly the same for trading. So you have always to know what do I look for. That's that's what I want to say here. And what I just described to you, how my PL developed here, shows that somehow I didn't go crazy here about being behind at the beginning of the month. First of all, just losing 1% of the equity I'm trading is not a big deal. Um, and on the other hand, obviously, I was always aware that I'm not in the market environment right now, which is favorable for my trading approach. And uh, now I want to close the cycle here. Um, what, I, what I emphasized at the beginning was that what I present to you here in terms of this strategy does not necessarily need to fit your own personality and your individuality, respectively, your personal style of trading, but it helps you to understand how important it is to develop such a trading routine. If you really have a clear plan, if you really know what you're looking for, and if you have a proven, a statistically proven, um, profitable trading system, system you're, you're trading here, you have a very good chance to, to reach a point of mental stability, which makes it 
let's put this in quotation marks, but since trading is not easy at all, but, but it makes it way more easy. Let's say, let's say, let's put it that way. It makes it way more easier to really uh, trade the markets. And that's, for example, something um, I, I already know in which situation and which market environment we are right now. And that's one of the reasons why I exactly know what I will do based on my setup here. And in fact, it, right now, I definitely favor the long side based on the developments from yesterday. And I, what I want to do right now is, first of all, guide you through why are we right now? And based on this setup, then formulate a trading setup, which we then want to uh, um, implement here or, or um, set up thanks to the mini terminal with uh, or from JFD brokers. So it's a little longer introduction here, but just to, to give you an idea, to give you, a, um, um, uh, to give you an agenda uh, what we are looking here at right now. So, okay, this is the setup. I hope you screen, just screenshotted it. Um, in fact, what I what I would say is this is for the S and P here. You can you can adapt this into something. Um, I've already prepared it. I, I I made this a little present to the audience last week here. So I haven't put the link or I cannot put the link here in the chat box, but I will put it below the video below this video here um, after this event. So this is my website. It's most mostly in German, but here on the Ausbildung, it's the same as education, you get here the DAX strategy guide. Um, so what we look at today is the S&P, but I have the same strategy as already um, um, told you, as I already told you here for the DAX. And you can download it as a PDF format. You only need to register here. Um, I'm already um, locked in. And then you can download it here and get a better overview of how to use such a strategy. So don't just copy and paste it, but really adapt it to your own personality. And the main target here is not to have just a strategy you can then um, trade and, and know that it's just statistically proven, profitable and all that stuff, but it's more to look for um, mental stability in your trading and have a trading routine and really know what you're doing over and over and over again. And since you know that you have an advantage, then in the long run, you will make some money. What I've already prepared here, by the way, is also, this is something I'll get you through a little later on. I've uh, just came across uh, uh, the, the, the statistics for the last two months. No, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, it's two months here. We started at the 25th of July with this approach. And um, I will just guide you here through this and then and, and, and just, show you how it looks in in reality trading this setup now for two months um, um it's just um, a setup here i've um, automated by the way so the setup you can find where i present to you is automated here and i um switched on this expert advisor here uh, two months ago so that's the reason why we're just looking at it for two months um here but it's really it, it's no big deal since um the target of this webinar here is in fact to give you some real life examples and show you how, how they could look like for example here expiration means um you had a setup but you didn't trade it that was on the 21st then you see the next setup was here at the 27th why is there a gap of six days i mean no weekend has six days um the simple reason Volatility is a filter. I have or I have a volatility filter here when trading the setup. So I'm looking for an open range in the S&P, for example, which has to be at least five points. This is something I haven't included here since this is the basic strategy. And uh, having such a volatility filter is something you I recommend to implement it. Not just having one filter here, but probably one on top here, for example, in terms of the volatility you're looking at. And right now, this is the thing that's, for example, the first um, um, part then of our of our research we do here. First of all, let's, level, let's have a look here at the VIX right now. This is the volatility index on the um, S&P 500. And what we can see is we are stabilizing around 10, respectively slightly below 10. So the current market conditions are the least volatile market conditions ever. It's it's not just here the VIX. Um, I mean, we had a VIX which was below nine already. That was something here. You can see the the 52 week range on um, at Bloomberg. Here gives you 8.84 um, points. But um, um, in fact, the current market conditions. I prepared a chart here already. No, this is the Russell. But this chart here, it's from uh, Charlie Bilello. Um, it's showing something well i know it from the tweet i just um, um i retweeted this and i just opened this graphic here um but here this chart shows it's from yesterday that the last 15 trading days uh that's something you can see here the 15 day intraday ranges from high to low as a percent is in fact 0.31 percent so if you if you uh, put this in in numbers here um 0.31 
if you look at the current uh, S&P trading at 2,505 points, you multiply this with the 0, 3, 1, and you get an average trading range for the last 15 trading days in the S&P from only 7.8 points, okay? This is nothing. It's really, it's nothing. And this is one of the reasons why you shouldn't have too much expectations in terms of a setup. So yesterday, for example, I formulated the setup. And I, by the way, I just found out that the setup was triggered, in fact, um, yesterday. So you'll find the trade yesterday here. And it, you can see it here. That's uh, the 27th of, of, uh, of September. So by the way, we, we are trading here with a 10,000 uh, euro account. And the risk we're taking per trade is 1%, meaning that every trade has a risk of 100 euros. And um, so yesterday we were triggered and I was, I was just a little irritated um, on why this, um, um, why we are triggered since I thought that the trading range yesterday wasn't five points, but it was, in fact, it was 5.2 points. And so it was uh, right wide enough to, to formulate a trading setup here. And um, so it was a short setup. And in fact, I presented it to the German audience. We aimed for 2,492. Um, and uh, the market reached 2,492.8. Let's just have a look here at the S&P. Um, one sec here. So here, that was the low from yesterday, the green line. And um, Unfortunately, yeah, we did reach our, our take profit here. Then the market turned around. What was the reason for that? Just let me give you also um, already an idea of in which current conditions we are trading in. So the reason for the squeeze higher here in the S&P itself is uh, mainly due to the strength in the small and mid-cap sector. So um, Russell um, 2000s just squeezed higher, pushed to above 10% uh, plus in the last one and a half months or so. And it was mainly the uh, mid and small cap sector pushing the S&P here higher, while the Dow Jones, for example, didn't see such a big push on the upside. The question for today is, by the way, whether we'll make it here to these highs or not. So it could be that the S&P uh, pushes higher and makes new all-time highs, while uh, the Dow Jones probably isn't capable of making it, since the Dow Jones already profited from what was presented from Donald Trump yesterday. So I'm not sure whether, whether this is really uh, the big deal and he can really um, uh, bring, something like, bring something up like tax cuts here or reform, um, the, the biggest reform for the last three centuries, as he called it. I'm not even sure if he's right or not on this. Uh, I think this is a this is a pity <laughs> for for uh, the U.S. president and me saying something like that. But um, however, the thing is um, that yesterday this uh, um, um, tax reform or potential tax cuts um, drove U.S. yields higher and also resulted in a in a rally in equities itself, especially in the mid and small cap sector. So the main reason for this squeeze um, we, we've seen here in the S&P was mainly it was mainly based on uh, what we've seen in the Russell here. And uh, so the, the Russell was where the, the, the small and mid cap sector were the main driver here um, the, for or the main reason for this push higher in the S&P and could be another reason for a push higher today, too. And why do I say that? Well, even though the trading range itself is very, very volatile, um, the first thing is rather sooner or later, there will be a volatility breakout. Some people might now say, well, well, it will be on the downside since volatility always spikes up the moment um, uh, we, we see some, some nervousness in the market or some, some anxiety. Um, but this is far away from the truth. In fact, volatility can also spike up if the market squeezes on the upside. And that has something to do, I mean, what is volatility? Volatility is a component in the option market or in, in an option in general. So it's one of the main uh, reasons or one of the, one of the um, main components to uh, um, uh, evaluate how much an uh, option is worth here. At the moment, um, the market breaks up on the upside that can result in market participants who bet on the market to stabilize on the current level, who are selling volatility, 
who saw the market capped on a certain level for whatever reason they sold volatility they have to buy volatility back and this squeeze on the upside can then result in a spike in the s p so in fact I mean, most of the time we say, hey, if the market corrects, moves lower, then usually volatility spikes up. This is true, but it's also true that volatility can spike up the moment we are squeezing on the upside. So you can't really tell whether the move will be on the up or on the downside. Um, and this is something you have to remember here. So volatility can spike up also in the moment the market moves on the upside. Um, and now the thing is, um, what do I what do I want to present to you is the following. First of all, this chart it's from last week Friday. It's a commitment of traders report uh, chart. It's from uh, John Kickleiter, by the way. So I think he's still chief market uh, strategist from Daily FX. Um, and what we've seen is that's already something you can you can you can see here. First of all, the market was right from the beginning of the year 2017. Here was very choppy sideways. So you can better clearly see it here so this is by the way the squeeze on the upside in the russell yesterday where's the chart here so you can see it that here from 12 pm onwards the market pushed higher and moved uh, nearly 30 points which is by the way a tremendous move i mean we're talking about an index here at lying somewhere around 1450 60 yesterday and then pushing up to 1500 so it's nearly two percent move uh, in the smaller mid-cap sector, but also here, look at year to date, for example, you can see the market had no direction over the last 10 months, or nine months, something like this. So it's more, more like eight months. And then bottomed out here in, uh, in, in August and squeezed higher and pushed from levels around 1,350 up to 1,500 points. So around 10 to 15% here on the upside. And probably we are not yet done. And one of the main drivers definitely was uh, here, the commitment of traders report, respectful to the, the futures positioning of, of those market participants who were heavily short uh, here at the beginning of the year. So you can see here the contract size, they were short. And there were times uh, when those market participants had 60 to 70 to 80,000 contracts short the Russell. And we are only looking at the future market here. Um, and the thing is that those um, bets never really made it back above zero right from the beginning of the year. And then you see the market bottoming out here. And there was obviously at least one, probably several big players coming in, buying aggressively the Russell here and pushing uh, from nearly 100,000 contracts net short to break even to well, wherever. I mean, the thing is that with those comments from, from Trump yesterday, there's still some huge potential in the Russell on the offside, I think. And, they, and, and why not? I mean, we, we've seen how aggressively uh, those buyers come into the market. For example, if you look at what happened here in 2016. So this push higher here was also based on the fiscal uh, stimulus speculation after the election of Donald Trump in November. So there is plenty of room on the upside and we could easily push as high as, I don't know, 50, 60, 70, 80,000 contracts. We have to wait until this, this uh, um, or how long this will last here. But the thing is that market right now is not as long as it might seem looking at where the Russell right now is trading. And this is exactly the chance, I think, for especially also the S&P to make it to new all-time highs and probably then outperforming the Dow Jones. And if you take this into account, if you remember what happened um, during November here after the election of Trump, and if you then take into account that the market is still has still some potential in the small and mid-cap sector, I think the only real direction you should trade today is the long side. Um, and, and probably here, push to these highs, probably push even above these highs. And this could also lead, by the way, to some further strength in the, in the DAX, um, and hopefully uh, pushing my position, by the way, uh, but just just let's see. I'm right now. I'm I'm really kind of indifferent here. So if it's just like I mean I have my stop level. I know that my system is profitable. Everything's fine. I'd really appreciate to see the market squeezing higher here and and uh, give me some 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 nice gains into the uh, a monthly close then. Um, but yeah, I mean at the end I de I highly depend on on what's happening in the U.S. markets here. But I think chances are higher to see um, the, the uh, S&P performing on the upside than on the downside, uh, thanks to what's happening in the Russell. By the way, that said, I obviously uh, see also the advantage here in the Russell on the long side. So if there's anyone out there trading the Russell, 
um, well, you can definitely get an idea of um, which side I favor here and, and positions um, I take in the in the Russell 2000, even though I don't trade the Russell, by the way. Um, okay, so that's it on the on, on my, my, my current view on the market. Now we combine this. The thing is that the market is really, it's the least volatile market in history, in the history. That's something um, I've, I've, I've shown to you here. Um, with this chart, what we can also see is that there's nevertheless some huge potential from the mid and small cap sector, could, which could push the S&P higher. And in such a thin market environment here, in such an involatile market environment, there's a good chance that um, there's probably some, some squeezy action then on the upside. And I mean, now let's just see what um, the Dow Jones will deliver here. Let's just see if the Dow Jones can perform positively too. So let's have a look here at the 15 minute time frame. Yesterday, the Dow Jones also performed well, even though um, it, it, it um, faced some losses here and, and we're only capable of making those losses back. That's not a very strong sign, even though we can also see here in the Dow Jones where the crucial level seems uh, to, to be that's 12,360 to 12,380 points. If we make it above this level, I think there's no uh, way out um, uh, for, for, the, for the bears here. And they should definitely uh, dump their position since there's a high chance that from a break of 360 to 380 here in the Dow Jones, um, the Dow Jones can easily make it towards the all-time highs, respectively, push even higher than that. And... Uh, attack the region around 22,500 points. Um, yeah, and so that's that's the current um, picture I'd like to draw here around the situation. So we, we should definitely favor the long side. But on the other hand, also very important to note is that there's a chance that we are that we are short in the day. And that's the re that or that that's happening the moment we are trading below the 10 exponential moving average here that exponential moving average 10 here on a 15 minute time frame so meaning right now first of all what we need to wait for is we need to wait for an open range to 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 uh to develop here so that's in fact the first thing so in fact we should probably take define open range between 130 and 215 pm first and then identify the advantage even though it doesn't really matter so we wait for the open range uh to be developed here and then we look where we are trading above or below the um, exponential moving average 10 on a 15 minute time frame. And if we're trading above, we are only going long. If we're trading below, we are only trading short. And um, yeah, at the end, we'll just see whether um, uh, where, where, if this break um, um, occurs or not. And that's it. That's the setup here. Um, potential targets, this is the thing. So this is the second thing you could adapt here. So what I, by the way, work with here while trading this was that I just uh, didn't work with any take profit, predefined take profit levels here. But what I did was I just closed the position here automatically at um, nine, I'm sorry, yeah, it's, it's in fact, it's 9.50, but it's 7.50 um, PM GMT. So 9.50 um, uh, um, PM German time. Uh, it's 7.50 PM GMT and it's automatically closed. On wherever the market is trading at this moment here i'm not working with any predefined levels but this is the next thing that's uh, it depends on, on your personal style on your individuality some might say yes this is exactly my my thing since i don't need to um find levels here um where the market will probably find strong resist or something like that but it um the market just decides whether it takes out my position or not um, um, where, where it takes out my position, not whether, but where, since uh, it's predefined that we just take out the, the trade here at the 7.50 p.m. GMT. Others might say, as with the example um, shown yesterday already, other might say, oh, by the way, that's not right here. I have to place it here. So this is, by the way, the Tokwas line is the uh, first tick at uh, 1.30 p.m. GMT. So it's, it's the open of Wall Street, the open of the spot market here. Um, the green line is the low from yesterday, the red line is the high from yesterday, and the deep blue line is the close from yesterday. Those are, um, in fact, objective lines in the chart. So to some, this might look a little irritating, but you, first of all, get used to it. And second, um, it's not, I, I, let's put it that way. I'm not a big friend of, of working with kind of patterns like 
guardly patterns or head and shoulder patterns or whatever. Uh, that has mainly to do with the fact since um, I'm also a guy who worked at a trading desk, a professional institutional trading desk, um, where, where I learned how to trade and all that stuff. And what I can tell you is none of these guys, institutional guys, uh, or none of is probably too hard, but let's say more than 90% of these guys don't look at any of these lines you find in any technical analysis books or something like Fibonacci retracements on that stuff. Um, I mean, there was during during uh, um, uh, the open outcry system, there was pivot points, for example, which were used and 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 and, and helped traders here to to find um, or to get an orientation. Where do we trade right now? But in fact, most of these traders don't look at these numbers, uh, or, or in fact, don't look at these charting patterns or that stuff. I mean, um, now some might say, hey, didn't you read uh, Market Wizards here um, and the interview with Schwager um, and uh, the, the interview with Schwager and the Morty Schwartz here who said, um, I, what, what did he say? Um, I, never, I never met a rich fundamental uh trader or no i think he didn't say that there was one guy who said i never met a rich technician and uh, schwartz said i had to love very hard about this since i became rich as a technician so um i think it's fair to say everyone should use in its in his or her trading what um fits his personality best but the thing is if um, you're talking about the big guys big speculators and all these guys institutionals well don't expect them to use those lines they might work for you perfect that's great and and you should go with this and if you have an, an advantage here statistical everything's fine but nevertheless um i always I'm, I'm very distant, uh, distant here to to these people saying hey this is what what institutional guys look at they just don't they just don't look at this. And I know this since I worked uh, um, behind the scenes um, for for quite a while, even though I was only a trading assistant back then. Um, nevertheless, I, I had the chance to really uh, look over these guys' shoulders here. And um, that's that's something I, I just wanted to, to tell you here. Um, so you might wonder now, okay, why are we working then with such a yellow line here? And this is kind of just a trend filter. It's, it's just a help to see where is the advantage to be found here in the trading approach we are trading it with and what we are trading with. Um, okay, let's come back to, to uh, let's come back to some 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 statistics here. Some of you guys um, stop and resistance levels. Oh, that's a very interesting question. It's a very interesting question. I mean, it's, it's, an, it's an obvious question. What levels do they look at? Well, um, support resistance, first of all, it's most of the time it's, it's objective lines. Okay. So for example, um, it's the high and low of the trading day, day before, especially it's the close and the open of Today's trading day, the open and the close of yesterday's open. It's the weekly high, the weekly low. It's the monthly high, the monthly low, yearly high, yearly low. These are objective levels and everyone has them on their agenda. So this, these are natural um, SNR levels. So SNR for support and resistance. Um, a second thing is that they're also looking at obvious levels. Like let's go back here to the decks. I, I made this already a topic. So this was a very strong resistance here, 12,300 points. Um, and I really expected the market to push aggressively above this level um, when it finally breaks above it. Um, same thing is true, by the way, for if there's any action on the downside and, and we'll finally make it to this region here around 11,900 points, we can also see that this is a very crucial level. If we drop below 11,900 points, for example, you can expect many market participants to see this. And by the way, now the thing is, okay, how will you say that someone can see a certain level? That's a fair question. And in fact, you, really, you can't really tell whether this is the line these people are looking at. Since um, some of the execution only guys, for example, they might get an order from a uh, um, uh, from a big bank or big insurance company or whatever, and uh, you just really don't know where uh, their 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 point of 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 the, the point of of their most pain is. So what does this mean? 
per point of most pain is the point where their position turns against them respectively they uh, will have trouble to get a nice bonus for example uh, that's one example just so that they say okay I really have to dump the position here since I only have certain risk parameters my my risk and money management uh, my risk manager is giving me here for example but also it is important for me as a trader to see the point where I still get a bonus so for example if you're working with something like uh, um, um, uh, a VWAP here, a volume weighted average price, you can say that if we are trading above that average price here and, and, and you're buying for a customer, well, you're buying at a worth, uh, at, a, at, a, at a price which is not optimal since your bonus is it will be based on whether um, you have a more attractive uh, price than the volume average price is showing. Okay, so that's we are going into too much details here right now, but but this is these are also um, um, components you should take into account. I think we shouldn't overcomplicate it here. Um, you might all, all just only wonder, okay, why why should this be a relevant level? Well, what we if we start to trade in this region, what could be possible is, and this is something also it's it's, it's available for free out there. So you don't need to pay for this. So, for example, if you look at the at the Eurex here, this is where the FTX is traded. Um, it's a perfect example. So you can get the same, by the way, for the Chicago Mercantile Exchange here. Um, they have the same levels. I can, by the way, unfortunately, I only have it in German here, but I can show you here. There's also an article. It's educational articles. And I've written something together here in terms of options. Um, also here, exactly seems like round numbers exactly round numbers for example psychological relevant levels so there are plenty of guys out there that's not just institutional guys but it's also also retail guys um they they don't have such a huge impact on the markets but retail guys look at round numbers why well um because it's something obvious for them oh the market just made it above twelve thousand points why is this a relevant number the same thing true for the uh, dow jones for example twenty thousand twenty one thousand twenty two thousand um you might say it's just a number and in fact this is just a number but it plays a certain role for market participants retail traders but also some institutional guys looking at these numbers but let's first of all here have a look at uh, the options now so you can you can see which levels are relevant so for example here if you click at this that's for the for the uh, chicago mercantile exchange it's the open interest profile um you can easily do this for for currencies also even though it's just six to ten percent um of the uh um, euro, euro future here which is uh um, traded uh, in the future most of of the uh, currency markets are trading otc but here if you're really if you if you if you're interested in what levels these guys are looking at well then you you can you can look the, the you can look them up here okay that's that's all i, I want to say by the way see your open interest let me just see oh i strike probably it's that one unfortunately yes yes for example here you can see um that's by the way all the, the expiration for all contracts you're looking at here the euro future so you really have to have some understanding deeper understanding about this and we don't have the time to cover all this right now but this is something for the chicago mercantile exchange which is also relevant then for the s p nasdaq dow jones and that stuff let's put it here with the dax the, the great thing about this is um, i'm using this all the time since i'm most of the time trading the dax here um and when i present something to to uh to my audience here i i most of the time show them those big stats here some of them might look at them and say what the heck and the thing is it's it, it looks more complicated than it finally is so um I, that's just an example and it's by the way the calls it's not the, the puts so you have to understand what's a put what's a call and that stuff but you can for example see here round number did we have it 13,000. So the market is obviously trading significantly below this level. So why did I just um, mark it here on the right column? Very simple. It's the open interest. That's uh, the interest of the market here and positions which are open at this level. So there are plenty of guys. This, these are written calls, short calls. And um, 
for um, um, illustration purposes here and not overcomplicating things with several option strategies and that stuff, what we only do is we just look at the, the so-called um, um, short call open interest here. So um, it's, it's just like these guys are betting. We are not looking at, at, at iron condors and that stuff, but we are only looking at 13,000 points and say, you know what? Um, here, the market has a certain line. If we go above this level, those people will feel tremendous pain. That has to do with the fact that they are betting that the market will trade below 13,000 in around three weeks from now. So in fact, this is not really relevant. It becomes relevant one and a half to one week before the expiration. And in Germany, for example, here on the AFTAX, it's the third um, a Friday of each month. And well, you can see that the, here, obviously, this is, a, this is a very important point. In fact, you can see this in the chart too, since here on the upside, um, um, it's it's like it's the all-time high, the region around it's 12,950 to 13,000 points. But the same, I bet, will become true the moment here we're pushing down towards 11,900 points. Then we are, by the way, not looking at the calls anymore, but at the puts, because then we are falling down. And then you have to, to, to see where's the point where the market participants finally say, okay, I don't expect the market to drop below this level. If it does, well, these guys have to take action here and make sure that their uh, sometimes enormous bets don't cause them huge and even bigger losses than huge. Um, and uh, um, um, that's why they then have to sell. If the market drops below this level, you should definitely await, if, especially if the open interest is here quite um, elevated, you should expect a short it open interest short put open interest, I have to say, um, that the market will take on some dynamic then if it pushes below that level. And uh, it, you can you can work with these numbers. And in fact, there was once a guy, um, he came from, from the US, he came to Germany and there was a presentation, a seminar, it, it's years ago, I think eight, nine years or something like that. And he held a presentation in Frankfurt back then. That was a, a big um, trade fair. And I was listening to this guy since I also uh, read, a, read a book from, from this guy. And um, I, I listened to him and he said, you know, there were several good things he said. Um, but but he, he gave this presentation and he just said, you know what? When I look at, at, uh, at a chart, respectively, when I look at numbers which are relevant to the market, you know what? I look at numbers um, which show me where the money is. And in fact, this is the thing. So for example, if you have something like, I don't really, I, I don't want to sound um, blunt here or something to, to all these guys working with technical indicators and that stuff. It really, if it works, everything's fine. But, and this is the thing, these patterns, they don't show you where the money is. Some might say, hey, the reason why Euro dropped is because of this head shoulder formation. The market had to drop, right? Look at this. I mean, that's a perfect head and shoulder, and that's why the market had to drop here, at least, or taking on some dynamic. I, I Okay, I understand the point, and probably that's one of the reasons. And probably there are people out there who made some money on this, on, this, on this break lower here. But I myself have to say, I think the main reason for this is because um, they... Um, I think the main reason is because the market is heavily net long hero, and also, since the uh, uh, fundamental outlook here um, turned against the euro here. So the market was long because they expected the ECB to be quite aggressive in their um, taper approach. The thing is, um, the thing is that, well, they, they, it, wasn't, it wasn't okay anymore to, to hold an aggressive long position here. And if they now start to dump this, and if this is combined with the Fed then saying, you know what, um, 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 we, we, are, we are probably taking um, action here in December again, hiking rates again. This is turning the tide somehow. And that's one of the reasons why we should at least see some profit taking here. So, and this is when I say, I, I, it's, it's not just the fundamental picture I take, but I, I combine it. Let's come back here to the, to the current picture in the, in, the, uh, and, uh, in the current situation we're trading in. I look here at the Russell, for example, and I wonder, hey, why is the market pushing aggressively higher? Since they are obviously underinvested, they, they are not yet as long as they should be in the current market environment, especially based on the comments Trump made yesterday. And that's one of the reasons why I think this market still has some room to go up here. And, and this is this is what, what I look at. And some, I mean, well, I, I, I say, I don't say that I'm not using any technical indicators. Um, 
In fact, I use them uh, to, to formulate a setup, but it's not the main intention I take a trade on. For example, um, let's have a look again at the DAX here. And by the way, some of you might wonder, okay, now show us something on the S&P. I will promise, promise it. But let's have a look here. So in the morning, for example, the market moved slightly higher, obviously, made new highs. And then you look here at the RSI and you say, hey, wait, isn't this, isn't this a bearish divergence here? Or kind of at least? Yes. But would you really go short in such a market environment we're trading in at the moment? I, I wouldn't. I mean, there's there's good reason to to to, uh, to to probably think there's a top forming, but all in all, you should be really careful since the overall market environment right now does not invite anyone to take aggressive anti-cyclical short positions here. So I don't think the market is yet done on the upside, even though it's very volatile and even though it doesn't look that huge here, but that looks, now it starts to look promising. So if we go above that, I think there's still some room bringing us at least a minimum another 30 points, probably even higher than that. I really hope for such a squeeze to happen here to get again. Again, I'm long DAX, so I, I, I have a position that's one of the reasons why I definitely hope for this to happen. But also here from an objective perspective, this looks really good, that looks strong. And with uh, probably the S&P now, um, really taking on the momentum from yesterday here, thanks to the mid and small cap se sector, um, I think there's there's probably some chances that we get to see uh, um, some bullishness here. So okay, that's by the way the perfect the perfect um, a moment probably to now look at the look at the um, um, current conditions here. So first of all, again, what I need what I need to 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 have is um, an open range which is bigger than five points. First thing. So right now the low here is twelve uh, two thousand five hundred and twenty five. By the way, just one sec. So let's put it that way. So SPX open range, it's 2,525. And now that's the only problem that the high right now is 2,503.45. So I'm sorry, 503.50. So right now the open range is only, is only 3.5. Two five points. That's not enough. So we still need another two points at least here on the upside in the next 20 minutes of trading to have an open range which justifies a long engagement. If we have such a range, so first, if the OR open range is bigger five points, we go step two. Where do we trade in relation to the EMA 10 on a 15 min time frame? So um, obviously we are trading above. We are long if the market breaks the open range on the upside. By the way, I, I uh, take out the scenario where I say, okay, it's, uh, it's but let me put it that way. Let's say 1A if the OR is smaller than five points, no trade. Let's put it that way, okay? Um, then, if we're trading above, and so far it looks as if we're trading above there, um, above this this yellow line, um, then we trade it on the upside, and uh, that's it. That's the setup. In fact, some of you might now say, "Right, hey, this is this is too simple. Can't work." It does. It works. I've shown this uh, to you several times. So this is the back test of this simple system here. Hello. Hmm. Okay, I just try it again. Here. So it works. 
what you can see here is the backtest of this system. It's not just a backtest, but, but you can you can also trade. It's very simple. You, you can't really manipulate it. So it's it's no chance really to 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 do some kind of curve fitting. There, the only thing you can really change here is uh, the 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 open range, the time frame. But I mean, we're talking about the open range. What what you want to do to extend it to two hours? I don't think that makes sense. Um, since we're talking about the open range, it's by the way a system which was already introduced not really invented, probably was invented, was back-tested from a guy called Toby Crable in the 1980s. Was, uh, where it's, you know that this system works for quite a while now. And um, the only thing you can really manipulate here is the exponential moving average 10. Uh, in fact, you can, you can really manipulate it on downside, but you can manipulate it probably on the upside, even though you will find out that this is an aggregation which works really well. And what you can see is that the system works back towards november 2010 so over seven years right now or not over but we're close to, to to get to seven years and um so we have a hit rate here of 47 percent with a payoff ratio of uh one point oh i'm sorry i only I always forget this so it's 108 divided by 082 1.3 1 1.3 to 1 and uh with uh hit rate of 47%, you get um, an expected value of 8 cents per euro, dollar, pound, whatever uh, currency you're trading in, uh, you're risking uh, uh, per trade. So it doesn't, mind, doesn't look that good, but be aware of the fact that we're trading this strategy here every day. And if you're making 8 cents per euro you risk, or let's say you're risking 100 euros, making 8 euros per trade on average, no matter, uh, no, doesn't matter if it's going up or down. If you're making a winning, if you have a love winning trade or a losing trade, and and you're trading this approach here, let's say 200 times a year, um, you're making 1,600 euros. Uh, if you're trading a 10,000 euro account, this is uh, uh, um, uh, um, this is 60 per per uh, per annum here. Um, not taking into account commissions, tax, and all that stuff, but you still see as highly profitable, even though it might look. Uh, ridiculously easy it is in fact it is it's not nothing spectacular here and you can easily adapt this to to uh, to currency markets FX and can adapt this to to blue chips like Google uh, or, or Apple and in back test all this you will find out that in the long run it really works well and um, you don't get a horrible um, um, result here so pr probably sometimes it might break even in certain market conditions here but all in all the system itself works really well and um so now i want to show you here some some real stats um and by the way you can see here that these orders are cancelled so you're switching in fact so um i've i've automated this so what the system does is the following um we're waiting for this for this uh, open range to develop here so far, it really doesn't look that good if we get to see a trade today. But, and this is the thing, if we're now trading back below the 10, uh, the exponential moving average 10 here on a 15-minute time frame, we, it generates a short setup for us. And uh, this is something, how you can understand here, it's canceled. Uh, but now what we do is we're taking out those canceled. Oh, I'm sorry. It wasn't good. Let's do it that way. So if... We're taking this out, and then I want to show you the result for the last for the last two months here. I mean, this is uh, from a statistical standpoint, it's uh, horrible to look at it that way. But what you can see is, for example, oh, by the way, um, there are losing trades. But having a losing trade doesn't necessarily mean that you're not making any money. You see? So, in fact, you had four lo losses in a row here at the beginning. I bet there are several people out there listening to this right now, trading the system, having those four losses in a row, and afterwards saying, hey, I don't trade it anymore. Now, the thing is, let's have a look here. What happens if you sum this up? It's huge. This is two, two months. It's 2.6%. Uh, this is really big. And in fact, if, if, you, if you look here, there is not many big winners. But, and this is the thing, if the market really runs in your direction, you can obviously gain a lot and overcome those losses here. And this is thanks to a clear risk and money management you have. So um, 
Yeah, and, and so in fact, you, you could I, I haven't calculated right now the, the hit rate here, but I think it should be something around 50%, I think. Uh, but this shouldn't count here at the moment. So what we look at is a very simple system which works, um, even though there might be streaks which are not very favorable. In fact, I could show you the results here from this backtest, and there are, um, there are um, um, times when the system is just losing six, seven, eight times in a row. Some might say this is not very um, uh, um, professional. In fact, this is professional, or this is what professional trading is about. Trading a system which has a positive expected value, and in the end, um, optimizing this system based on the personal needs and uh, based on the personal experience you might have and to try to get a bigger expected value. Or what I just presented to you here is, I haven't wrote it down right now, but uh, the thing is, I haven't written it down. Um, what, I, what I've just presented to you is we are making eight cents per euro re-risk per trade. So um, now the thing is, what should be our target as a professional trader? Use this basic strategy and make it even more profitable. Try to bring this number up to 10 cents. This 10 cents can make a tremendous, tremendous uh, difference at the end of the year. Again, why? Well, because we are trading this not just once or 10 times, but we trade this 200 times a year and more than that. And um, just imagine the following. I just presented to you that if we are doing 200 tra trades a year and we're risking 100 euro per trade, uh, that means that on average, we're making 16%. Now, I just said, well, just push this number up to let's say, 10 cents, what happens? Well, it, the thing is that a year you're making 20%. It's 2,000 euros then. 10 cents, it's 10 euros per trade if you risk 100 euros. That means 200 trades is 2,000. And based on a 10,000 euro account, you're making 20%. This is a tremendous amount. And if you take this into account um, when trading the markets, uh, I, yeah, I definitely bet you will be ahead. In, long, in the long run. But there are several reasons you have to live by and, and then there, there, there's some truth you, you have to believe in trading. For example, that the long term is uh, giving you a positive trading results. So profitability, profitability in trading is not about, um, is, is not about um, uh, um, um, just doing one or 10 trades, but it's, uh, it's, the, the, it's, it's, it's all trades combined. By the way, I just found out you might wonder now, I, I, I promised it. And so I will do this. It's, it's just three minutes. So the thing is now the following. We are working here with the mini terminal. You can find all this at the website from JFD Brokers. Um, what I want to, to show to you is how you can um, work in or with an order here. So I said, hey, I have a long position in DAX going. Yes, in the live environment. I'm not doing this here now in the live environment, uh, but I'm only doing this in a demo version. Okay, so I could show you the trade, but I think that doesn't make that much sense. Some of you might have listened to me in the morning meeting, so they know I'm not talking. I have a position and I don't have a position at all. But some of you have already seen uh, the, the, the size of the positions here. So I'm trading an account which is bigger than this demo account, by the way. So it's, uh, um, yeah, I, I'm not joking. That's very, very impor important. Um, it's 1%. It's 1%. But this is the great thing. So the question is, risk per trade as a percent of the account balance. This is the great thing. So let's have a look here. If you click in the mini terminal at this green button, there's a picture, uh, there's there's a, um, uh, an order box opening here. And first of all, we're working with a so-called OCO breakout order. Um, so we are going on the long, we are going long if the market breaks out on the upside and we're going short if it breaks on the downside and the uh, um, order is automatically deleted. Why do we do this? Why can't we do this? It, we can do that or we should do this since we can already see here that if the market breaks on the upside, the long um, setup here, we should, we, we definitely trade above the exponential moving average 10. While if we trade it here on the short side, we are obviously trading below that. And that's the reason why we can work with an OCO order here. Then you type in the price. Right now, um, the open range is not big enough, but right here, it's like you're typing in 2,503.5 going long. Does it work? No, we have to type in a dot here. Uh, and the cell is 2,500.2, let's put it that way. So you can say here, fixed lot size, but now we come to the question. Also risk per trade as a percentage um, of the account balance, no problem here. You can easily type this in and he will calculate this for you automatically. So if you say 1%, for example, he's 
risking 1% of your account balance. This is the great thing. You don't need to calculate it yourself, but you can easily uh, type this in here in the minute terminal, and there we go. So then we type in the uh, stop loss, okay? And uh, the stop loss, in this case, you, you will see this. So the stop loss is at a fixed price. You can see here it will be 2,000 and, uh, by the way, is there a second order? We have to have a second order. No. Okay. Then let's use this one here. It's three point five. In this case, you can you can easily do all this here. No take no take profit. Place the order. There we go. Oh. Okay. So he only placed the long side. Okay, that's not that great. <laughs> um, so usually there should be two orders right now. And here's the stop loss. Um, Hmm. What's the reason for that? Oh, by the way, it's a no. It's a fifty-minute time frame. Okay, good question. Usually, that shouldn't happen. But all in all, this terminal works pretty well. So there's there's one reason. I I just I just um, um did something wrong here when typing in the order. That's probably also because I have to hurry up a little. But all in all, I think, and this is exactly what's what's the main um. um Reason for using this, you can you can use those numbers here, and you don't need to calculate them the, yourself. And this is especially um, valuable for those people who have to type in their orders fast, who are discretionary traders, scalping the markets and all that. The minute terminal is the right thing for you then, and this is as, as this is the main reason why I wanted to to present this to you. So um, you can you can see here. By the way, I have two of these charts open. So in fact, I'm. I, I wouldn't call myself lazy, but nevertheless, uh, you can see here it's a second 50-minute chart, and in fact, here I'm working with an exponential uh, with an expert advisor, and so it all is done automatically. So, uh, in fact, um, that's that's what I wait for. So I take this order out here right now, um, but what I can tell you is in the next 15 or no, in the next eight minutes here, once we have an open range, which is, hope, which is hopefully bigger um, five points, then this order will be automatically uh, given to the chart here. And I'm not using the minute terminal, even though I highly recommend this tool for discretionary traders. That's it from my end. I hope you enjoyed this webinar. If you have any questions, please shoot me an email. Um, you can also contact me via Twitter, by the way, uh, at jensklad at, at jenskladfx here. Um, and Below the video, I will um, post this this link towards the uh, um, trading guide if you're interested in it, and have a have a um, written version of, um, of strategy here for the DAX, which could be easily adapted to what I just presented to you here um, for the for the S and P. And talk to you again then next week. I look forward to it. Happy trading. Watch your stops, and uh, see you. Bye bye.